wife's time and I was thinking about how many things have happened over the past 17 seasons and how I'm a little confused like we started talking and we're like was that before or after the catfishing you know when did this happen how long have they been places and I thought why don't we just do a quick season 1 through 17 um, recap like not in depth like we would normally do but kind of like and then this happened and that happened so get, grab your snacks and go to the restroom because we're going to be here 24 hours <laughs> now if you want in-depth recaps you can click down in our description we have recapped since season seven um, right when we were watching it so it's our unfiltered view of what we had i haven't gone back and watched them but occasionally i get comments that are like man you were right right from the beginning which i love hearing but we, we, we know seven through 17 and i think john joined me shortly seven into through 17 seven season seven oh. through 17 and john joined me super in he is you can and it's fun if you rewatch all of them you can slowly see john become more engaged over the seasons um he went from basically being a potato in the room to all that. And if you want, you can also see we've done season one through three on a rewatch. So that's us watching already knowing what's happening. So it's, a, it's got a lot more commentary. It's a lot more of that. Let's get right down to the pencil wedding. Okay. So in the meantime, right now, we're doing that. We're talking about season one. If you do not remember the first season, we meet the Browns. We meet the Brown family. And at that time, Robin is the fiance, and she still lives several hours away. With Co Cody. Cody would go down there every weekend. It's and he claimed he was chaperoned, but anyway, the way that it goes is episode three, Robin moves. Cody continues to spend the night at her house, even though they're only engaged. So keep that in mind when you hear all of their, they're so much pure than everybody else talk. So episode three, Robin moves. Episode four, Christine gives birth, which is when Cody had to run over to Robin's house. And what is pencil? To, to get some stuff from for Christine, and then all of a sudden he's at Robin's house. Oh, making no, out he with said her. he had to run over to get some for Christine. Oh, okay. Episode five is the Mary anniversary trip, where they take like a two or three days. So we don't talk about that a lot, that Christine gave birth, and then he had this vacation trip with Mary, but it was a very appropriate couple of days. Probably the equivalent of how long he would have been gone anyway. Episode 7 is the wedding. And episode 9 was the honeymoon extravaganza that was 11 days. Where she's dressed so provocatively. Only according to her standards. Well, she's in a swimsuit. With anyone else. But yeah, if it was McKelty, they would have had an absolute fit. Okay, yes. so that was all season 1. Season 2, the timing is it starts with... They're filming right before season one aired. So before season one aired, they went to New York to do this like interview junket where they talked about the upcoming show, Sister Wives, that shows behind the scenes. So the reason that's significant is because season two, episode one, is the first time that they became public and that they're being filmed in real time, which very quickly turns into them being in trouble with the law. Which is the beginning of the end. He takes Christine to Vegas before they discuss moving to Vegas. So I'm thinking he already knew. Then they actually go to Vegas to kind of look for homes, get rentals and stuff. The end of season two is them arriving in Vegas. And these seasons, these original seasons are very strange because... That was a huge bolt of lightning. Wow. I'm sure they can't hear it, but that was surprising to us. Um, because season three starts off to the second that season two ends because what they do is they announce that robin is pregnant they have the whole the kids aren't happy enough for me how preemie was the baby no so the the what we realized was what she says is we didn't start trying to have a baby until we moved to vegas but i'll tell you that timeline is so tight that realistically they must have gotten pregnant like the second they arrived in Vegas or something because it's such a such a tight. Well, they've been practicing since they were engaged, so. Right. Since I think before they were engaged, possibly. Um, Scandal. So they around that they're pregnant. At this time, they're in Vegas. They're in four separate rentals kind of spread out all over. Um, yeah, a whole mile apart. And they start the, the false, we're going to open a gym storyline with them working out and all of that. And at the end of the season, the last episode of the season, is Robin giving birth. 
Same thing with season four. When I first watched these, and I feel like when I watched this on Netflix back in the day, 10 years ago or whatever, that these were all clumped under a couple of seasons. Like they were all treated as one because I thought season seven was actually season five because season four, no, season, wait, yeah, season four starts with Robin giving birth, which is how the last season ended. So it's like no time has passed. Um, season and one of the big storylines for season four started the because it starts with Robin saying, I'll be your surrogate. And so one of the things that you we know see that's horse dookie throughout season four is this will they or won't they marry thing. Um, and one of the big things that happens is they have Christmas, their first Christmas in Vegas, and Robin gives everybody a necklace that's from our new business we're starting, My Sister Wife's Closet, that she has designed. It's only the dumbest idea I've ever heard. It's literally the first time we've heard of it. The last episode, they, like a week before she gave birth, they were still talking about a gym. At Christmas, all of a sudden she announces, we're going to do this new business, and she's been what designing. What was the gym going to be Well, the called? other thing is. Um, Fundamental fitness. Fitness fundamentals. Whatever. He made a joke it was fundamental fitness. But what was interesting about this was that they were still talking about opening a gym when Robin must have been designing and ordering, because she didn't make these necklaces. I, I don't know if I'm trying to brag. I make, I make and have made jewelry. I'm not fabulous at it, but I do all that. She didn't do that. She didn't do that. She just had a design and clearly had it she used made child labor out of China. by someone, probably China, to be realistic. So the idea is, why did we as the viewer not hear about it? And I'm thinking that this is a lot of, you can watch our longer recaps for my opinion on how I think that she finagled this well, in there. Well, she wet a certain pencil and then gets her way with everything. <laughs> and to be fair, I, by no means am I the only person on earth who believes this. I think everybody believes that my sister wife's closet was Robin's idea and no one else was really into it but Cody. So when you comment below in the comments, Cody or Robin, like... You know, it's okay. You can leave nasty comments, but we know it's you. Okay, so season four is when the oldest Logan graduates. When the oldest Logan? When the oldest child, whose name is Logan, oh. graduates. Okay. Sorry, that's how my notes are written. It's the oldest Logan graduates. Super coherent. So season five, so at the end of season four, or sort of the mid, um, actually the beginning of season four, they start looking at properties to do this cul-de-sac thing. Um, season five the cul-de-sac storyline actually starts. They put down money um, for to the builder to try to get this, this cul-de-sac, and then that starts the whole how do they how do they do it. Now, what I wanted, they're, they're figuring out debt, they're picking out house plans, all of that. What's interesting is halfway through season five, they say it's been one year since the move, which means they were moving fast. That's pretty fast when we compare it to Flagstaff, where essentially nothing happened for years and years and years, there was no action. Well, there all. was action. John, you win the sex jokes. I don't know that anyone appreciates them. I don't care. I know you don't. Um, so, and then Logan, so at the end of season four, Logan graduates. At the end of season five, he actually leaves for college. So apparently season five was just that summer or something. I don't really understand. Um, season six, maybe I'm, maybe, maybe I wasn't paying close enough attention when I wrote up these notes. Season six is the houses are being, are being built. They're having a walkthrough. And I feel like it must have been longer than, I'm going to go back to season five. It must have been a year and a half because they moved in January. So, and this was filmed in the summer. So season six, they're building the houses, they're doing the walkthrough. They're talking about how they can't move in by Christmas. Mary needs a wet bar. They have the, the I think the wet bar might've been previous season. Christmas is a, is a week late. They bury the time capsule. And then finally, we get the final resolution to the Mary story, which is Mary is not going to do surrogacy. I, I thought that was settled. She's busy on the internet with her boyfriend, who's a girl. Uh, yes, that is correct. I thought you were being snide. But no, that is true. Well, we're going to get to that. We don't really know when the catfishing started, but I think we're getting close. I don't care. Um, so the couples, they do their big couple, couple retreat. The four of them and Cody go to go do that trip where they are all super awkward. Trudy falls extremely sick and then they have the commitment ceremony. And the commitment ceremony wasn't showing up in a lot of, um, previews, like in the, the, the episode descriptions, but I'll tell you, it felt like that stupid 
family thing that their family pledge oh my god what was that called horse duty? no i felt like it went on forever forever and ever all i remember is maddie being like what if i don't want to sign it and i was like oh. maddie's such a breath of fresh air for me <laughs> amongst the kids who are like mom and dad are great maddie was always like i don't know this all seems a little blown out of yeah, I don't want any part of this. I know not everyone likes Maddie, but there you go. Um, so they had a commitment ceremony. Se season 7. Mary wants to go back to school. This was the first episode. It's called Mary Drops a Bomb. It's my very first Sister Wife recap episode. She wants to go back to school, but Robin's like, no, you can't leave because I want you <laughs> to work for my company. It's so clear that Robin... Calls the shots? Well, Robin just wanted to design jewelry, and she thought everybody else was going to do the... the the actual running the business and I will tell you turns and, out there's no market for polygamists well you make it sound like they sold them who to thunk no but anyone who has I'm sure there's plenty of people watching who are entrepreneurs who run their own business almost all of them will tell you it's everything else but your main business that takes up like 95% of your time like as a writer by the way I'm a writer I have books you can go to, there's a link in the bio below. You can also just Google my name, Nikki Haverstock, which should be like right there somewhere um, at any of your favorite places. And you should be able to find my books, my eBooks, my audio books anyway. But I will tell you, and I'm also an author coach and I will tell you as an author coach, a huge percent of writers, what kills them is the marketing, the, the getting the word out, the distribution, all of the stuff that is not actually writing a book. Um, and I, I've heard that I've also um, made made jewelry, I've done lamp working, and it was the same thing there. It wasn't the making the beads that was the problem. It was the packaging, the shipping, the taking pictures, the listing stuff, the talking to customers. And as far as I can tell, that is true for almost every business. I've heard dentists complain. You, you have a friend who has a doctor's practice, and they said that the biggest problem they have is like who they hire, the management, all of that. Like it's a universal thing that's saying like, well, I'll do the designs and everyone else will do the actual running the business is the worst possible deal you can get. So um, this season was a lot about my sister wife's closet. That's when they had the shark tank, which was, I mean, we've seen a lot of cringy things on this show. Them going and pitching their business to those business people and them not just seriously being like, get out. I don't know what you're doing, but even for a TV show, I'm not doing this. So, so embarrassing. I can't even watch Shark Tank because it makes me too anxious because I'm incredibly anxious by trait. But even that was awful. They do the big RV trip, all of that. Season eight, um, <clears throat> Not a lot happens. I think this is sort of the point where they thought maybe the show would be canceled because this these season got shorter and shorter. Dayton gets his eye surgery, which I, in my memory, thought happened after Isabel's scoliosis, but it happened way before her scoliosis. Because in my mind, I was thinking she got scoliosis, they were against surgery, and then later on Dayton, and then they got surgery and stuff like that. But this is when Dayton got the surgery, to be clear, Totally unfair that Cody gave uh, Isabel such a hard time about her scoliosis surgery. But also, I do agree that I'm glad they got Dayton that surgery. Which one's Dayton? Who's, Dayton is Robin's Dayton? oldest boy. Oh, so and she's from the favored wife. So, of course, he gets the surgery. Right. I mean, come on. So, the big cliffhanger of season eight is that Mary talks about that she's willing to get a divorce so that Rob, uh, Cody can take Robin's kids. I, there is much and it's debate. it's easy out for her so she can go be with her boyfriend who's a girl. I always, she was catfish, just to be clear. Um, I had always assumed that that was part of the reason that she was so willing and eager to get rid of that. Was like, it was a nice thing for the family, all of that. And maybe she had one foot out the door. I've heard people say the reverse. Also a strong theory, which is that she did this for the family and then Cody kind of just basically abandoned her. And that's when she got involved with the catfish. But they haven't been bumping uglies for years at this point. Yeah, at this point they have not. It's not on my chart because it wasn't mentioned. But recently they said that somewhere around season three, four, uh, uh, three, four, five, someone like that, they stopped having sex, Cody and, and Mary. Anyway, so the big cliffhanger of season eight is that Mary 
says that she's going to get divorced. Season 9 opens with Mary getting divorced so that Robin can marry. And of course, that sent shockwaves through. Because Christina and Janelle don't even know. They just kind of did this on the side. Which is, which is a good argument that Mary was doing it to try to win back favor. But yeah, I still kind of... I just... When we watched it and the catfishing came out... My initial thought was like, oh, uh, that's why she was willing to give up the divorce, the head and wife. And there's the dots that connect. So, season nine, the whole season was the adoption storyline. Um, uh, this is when Christine and Cody go do the Robin solo. Robin cries in this season for sure. Oh, gosh. We're going to start tracking when she doesn't cry, John, by the way, moving forward. It's a lot easier. Christine and Cody do that solo marriage counseling where he's like, family, family, family. And she's like, but what about us? And he's like, I don't care about you. I just care about the family. And it's like, well, isn't that... Convenient. At the end of the season, they go to Alaska. And that's when Mary is like, hey, guys, I might not be here. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? And then the next episode, Mary admits that she's been catfished. Season... Excuse me. Season 10. The catfish season. Oh. Almost as bad as the COVID seasons. Almost. Um, so no. the catfish season, it does not go on as long. I well, know. I know. That's why it's not as bad. I'll say it's still in many ways is still going on. But for a while, it was the only. These are my notes. Season 10, the catfish season. Robin gives birth. They do the Hawaiian vacation. Season 11. Maddie's wedding prep, and McKelty says that she's getting married. Still talking about catfish. Lots of wedding content. Oh, look, more about the catfish. Like, every time we felt like we were getting free, the friend who had been catfish showed up for an episode. Um, someone has a beef, and they have to have a talk with Mary about the catfish. Like, every time you turned around, the catfish was happening. Okay? Now we're moving into what I feel is the more modern era of sister wives if we're gonna if i'm gonna be a historian and start naming ages so that's season 12. season 12 is when mary introduces the bed and breakfast idea that's and when the, cody shoots it down hard we're not with the family's money because well we're not even there yet i mean this goes on for a while so originally mary was gonna do the bed and breakfast with christine's mom and that very quickly went to the side i'm guessing her mom was like oh i want to be involved and then christine's mom mckelty has her wedding Utah strengthens their laws against Lots of friggin' women. tacos. Tacos this, tacos that. Everybody needs 12 tacos or 20 or some. Oh, gosh, the taco talk. The wedding talk. Um, I, I, here's the thing. There's a lot of discussion about why everyone was so excited for Maddie's wedding and not for McKelty's. Well, I'll tell you why I wasn't. I found Tony insufferable right from the beginning. I guess there was, I guess Gwen has said that there were some racist overtones. I mean, if that's what happened, that's what happened. But I just didn't like him. I found him really, I don't know. I still don't like him. You know, he's just not my flavor. I'm sure there's plenty of people who watch me and watch 10 seconds worth and go, oh, I hate this lady. Same thing. I wouldn't say it to his face. Um, and he shouldn't be watching this channel. Uh, so this is when we get introduced to scoliosis, to Isabel's scoliosis, that it's Which getting worse. Which she totally doesn't need surgery for. Just um, stretch. That was what in, Cody says. And a brace. And that was an infuriating, um, infuriating discussion. I heard someone describe it as this idea that you could do stretches and have Just it concentrate your cancer away. And have like the brace do it. Is they talk he he talked about how long you have to wear like braces on your teeth and that you have to do all that. Um and and that you can't just do exercises for a few hours a day and have it make a difference. And then even the, the way the brace was, it wasn't like it was connected to her bones and pushing on her bones. It's just, I don't know. I'm not an expert on scoliosis, but it definitely felt to me. And I remember being, I'm going to say something critical of Christine, which I remember being mad at Christine that she wasn't doing more to advocate for her daughter when she was living with her. And Cody was just kind of like, oh... Whatever. Now, you can say that that's just the result of growing up in a cult, but it's still a criticism of her. People sometimes are like, oh, you just think that she's a saint. No, she screwed up plenty. Maddie gives birth, and then there was the whole deal with Mary, which also, another th thing that I want to, wasn't Christine's business and all that. Um, and then the big sit down with Mary about how she wasn't welcome there. And I it really was like, is this necessary? Take out some of this anger on your husband you're mad at. Yeah. Season 13. Mary's bid is accepted to the B&B, &B, and then the next episode, she's doing it alone. She's gotten the money elsehand, 
elsewhere. This is when Cody starts to hint he wants a change, and then he announces he wants to move. Cody uh, wants to move to Utah, but that's instantly blocked by the wives. And so Flagstaff is his next pitch, totally randomly. But he gaslights Christine, right? Is this where he gaslights Christine? No, or were later. They, later. We'll get to that later. So cue the seasons about all the wives bugging Mary. Are you moving to Flagstaff with us? Oh, Are yeah. Are you moving to Flagstaff with us? And I was Are just... You... Tell we're sick. Tell we're just Well, nauseous. my thing was like... just let her. She doesn't want to move. It was And it was clear. So this season 13... The, the the catfish was announced at the end of season nine. Nine. It was now season 13. And they were like, are you going to move to the bed and breakfast? Are you not going to move to Flagstaff? And I was like, it's been four seasons. There's been zero movement for Cody. Just let her go. Like, this is the healthiest thing. This is like... Would have been. Yeah, that really bothered me. I was like, just let her be. If she... Just wants to fade away from the family, go for it. You know what I mean? So um, Cody says he wants to go to Flagstaff. Aspen moves, gets married to Mitch. They buy the land. The end of the season is they move from Vegas. So they have another end of a season. Well, at least they moved into the house that was ready for him on the land, right? Yeah, no. Oh, no? Um, but they've all bought houses, right? Close no. to each other? No. And in fact... In fact, they don't even have all they don't all have rentals because season fourteen Mary's immediately kicked out of her rental the very first episode. They were like, We don't want this this carnival. Now what they should have just said is don't worry, Mary's in the out with the family, you'll never see these cameras again. Yeah. It's probably very realistic. Uh, Cody has a did I make a mistake? And it's like, yeah, brainiac, you made a mistake moment. Um, uh, tensions are high, but Cody has a plan. Cody has a plan to fix this. And the big plan comes out on Christmas Day when he announces the one big house idea. Which we know went over like a, like a, like a turd in a jacuzzi. Like it was not a popular idea from many people. And I'm going to repeat this, which is the general consensus is that Christine was against it. And she definitely was against it. I am not arguing with that. She was vehemently, vocally, vastly against the idea. Mary... Did not look like she was a fan, but she didn't have to say anything because she knew that she was barely there. No one cared about her opinion. Definitely didn't care. Janelle was like, of course. Of course we're going to do the one big house. That's how it is. Um, and then Robin, I absolutely a thousand percent believe, was against the idea. But there was, but she was not going to say it in front of the other wives. She was, If she was going to say it, she was going to start suddenly, subtly... Pre or post coitus. Planting little hints about stuff criticizing how loud and unhappy he is when he's with the other wives, et cetera, et cetera. But there was no way she was going to do it. I really think she was against it. But why should she say anything when Christine is taking all of the heat voluntarily? Um, so they have that. We get to Valentine's Day, and then I lost my place. And then after Valentine's Day, so it was introduced on Christmas, after Valentine's Day, still fighting about the house. He is still really mad. Cody says he is over polygamy. Uh, this is when, oh, sorry, I couldn't help myself. I rolled my eyes. Oh no, Robin's house is being sold and they have to move. Well, I mean, so they got a shack, right? Yeah, so, and then there was no place she could live that wasn't hours away or far, far too small. Let me remind you how small the other wives' houses were when they had six kids. And let's just compare it to Robin needs like a five or six bedroom house or whatever. And she, she they play it out for three episodes that they're fighting about buying a house. Because he's like, let's just buy a house. They have, they have, they, they have, have the other fight. They have the other money from the other wives. So, yeah. you know, just give it to Robin and her million dollar house. So they, they have bought. to buy a house and she's crying and she's really doing the... Uh, Poor me. Does protest Poor too me. much stuff, and then the, the season season fourteen ends with Maddie having her second uh, baby back east and is rushed to the hospital. Okay, season fifteen. I know we're coming into the home stretch. I want to remind you, they moved at the end of season thirteen. So remember when they moved to Vegas within a year? They said within a year, but I'm going to guess within a year and a half. Uh, is closer. They they had a property and they were starting the process of building. 
I mean, when they when they got there, they were pretty quick about finding what they wanted. Like it was a high priority. They moved at the end of season thirteen. It is now season fifteen, so it's one full season. They're not even close to doing anything with the property. And in fact, they just or even talking to each other really. They sunk a ton of money into like a million dollars into Robin's house, which was probably all the money. Even when we talk about just the fact that they probably did a down payment. Okay. Season 15, Janelle is like, we need to get the family back together, which is Janelle's song, the whole, the whole show. But I will say that Janelle, to me, was the one who seemed the most... In denial? No, I was going to say, it's just here about her desire to be together. Oh, okay. As opposed to Robin's doublespeak. Also in denial. Okay. Uh, maybe a little denial. So Utah decriminalizes polygamy, season 15, and oh. this is when Christine says... Gets gaslighted. This is when Christine says, we can move back. You wanted to move to Utah before we moved to Flagstaff. We still haven't built on the property. Our whole family is there. Our community is there. We could move back. We're not building on this. And Cody kind of seems open to it until he's not. Well, until he gets with Robin. And then he's not. wonder what happened. Um, and, and then, then immediately... He, he dashes her dreams in front of every wife, right? No, no, I don't remember how it works. Pretty sure. Uh, but season f episode four is when COVID starts. The worst and episode most. Episode four of what season you... fifteen. Oh my gosh! So fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen were all COVID seasons. I'm gonna guess. So if you haven't had enough COVID personally, I think it's gonna still be going on. I, I kind of hope it's like just not mentioned in season eighteen. It's... I know. Hold on. Um, Christine wants to talk, this is when the talk about the basement wife comes up and then there's more COVID, COVID, COVID. It's kind of the storylines about COVID. This is also when Mary and Cody's infamous 30th anniversary with Rice Krispie Treats, where Cody alleges that it was a birthday. So first off, he was wrong. When he was considering getting back with Mary, but then Christine threw this huge fight at a family party, which uh, we don't, I don't see. So, like, we saw his birthday party, which was before COVID. We saw this after. So, he says that they were at a family party. Allegedly. No, I mean, none of the facts are lining up because he said it was the Rice Krispie Treats, which was the anniversary. They did not have a family party after that time. And so, that couldn't happen. If it was a birthday, it wasn't Rice Krispie Treats. So, it's not adding up. But you can go watch all of my videos where I... The last season's tell-alls where I rail against where we it. Where point out the inconsistencies. More COVID fighting. But it hasn't... I feel like it hasn't reached a fever pitch just yet. Season 16. This is the official rejection of Christine's desire to move. I will note they still haven't done anything with the land. And we are, I mean, centuries behind. But they still haven't done anything with the land. And she has this... We're not going to do it. And this is where... But wait... Sometime during that season, they get a 10,000 gallon cistern. cistern for the property that they've built nothing else on. I, I guess it still needs to be, like, they need to, everybody keeps saying it's something to do with the um, prairie dogs, the land needs to be fixed. They don't have electric, they don't have, I don't get how they don't have all that stuff because it's a neighborhood, like, is it that expensive? But I, I'm not getting into stuff they don't cover on the on the stuff because I can never tell who's a trustworthy source and who's repeating a trustworthy source and who's repeating a not trustworthy source. So I'm not getting into that. But they have that outdoor get together with the multiple fireplaces. I believe this is the one where Cody's like, these are my rules or whatever, although they don't have them yet. Um, yeah, but still don't have them. But, but they're the, his rules and he knows them. But the COVID rules where he's like, they're not Robin's rules, are mine. And then we see him go and he has not a care in the world. He's standing close to everyone. He's doing this. And Robin's the one running around. And I just heard someone today say that Janelle and Christine were so irresponsible. And people pointed out... Who got COVID again? Well, what? my thing was... Which ones? Janelle said, you know, we're following the CDC guidelines. Cody's the one who's saying they're acting irresponsibly. That is an unreliable narrator. I don't really know because they were very vague about all of it. But if she did follow the CDC guidelines, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to... But if you're wondering what the babysitter does, what does the nanny do? She yeah. brings COVID. To the house. But they, um, my thing, though, is it's clear that Cody's not following the rules. He just wants everyone else to because his whole thing was... No, he does. He doesn't care. He just, it's a convenient excuse to... 
well, stay he, with Robin and never see anyone else who he in, doesn't care about at in all. Six, in season 15, his big solution was the family couldn't get together, but he could go from house to house, which is doesn't make any sense as far as COVID cross-contamination goes. But that doesn't work at all. Anyway, we're, we can't, we can't, I, I can't rehash these things for my own mental health. I'll go insane. Where were we? Okay, season 16, um, they have that big thing that goes together. Christine announces she's taking Isabel to New Jersey. Like, that's just all there is to it. Cody does not go. Season 5 is... He does not approve. Episode 5 is the surgery. He my, cannot afford it. My notes say Janelle's kids are mad. There's more fighting about the kids. And then season episode, sorry, episode 10 is when they have to get together for Ari's birthday. And Cody makes an exception to all the rules. Everybody, you know, can come for Ari's birthday because it's really super important. And then they get a COVID exposure because it turns out that their nanny had COVID and was there the day before. The nanny was going in and out of the house, in and out of the house the whole time. That's what the nanny do. And so now, so Cody doesn't follow any of the rules anyway. Season 17, it's uh, it's over. Christine is bailing. I can't even tell you. The electric feel when that was announced right before season 17 was released. They did the official announcement that Christine was leaving. About time. Which I think was the time that she was actually literally moving in real life. Um, so by this point, we're years behind. Yeah. So Christine is, is bailing. So ex I mean, oh. To capture that feeling, if I could give my readers that same sensation of excitement in my books. A relief. As I felt when I heard this news. It was like, finally, you know, all of these seasons, every single season, something outrageous would happen. And I'd be like, that's it. That's the end. How can they overlook this? It's so blatant. This favoritism so blatant. Cody is such a, a terrible husband. This situation is so unhealthy. And then every season they'd be like, oh, Cody has it so hard. He works so hard for this family. Everything going oh, wrong is oh. absolutely my fault. Yeah, it's all the wives' fault. Everyone's too mean to Robin. Okay, and so finally to hear like there would be some like actual movement is like the most satisfying thing. Um, Janelle gets that RV and Cody has an absolute breakdown about how she's not doing anything. And I'm like, where have you been these seasons? Where were you these last few seasons? I mean, Cody barely visits her, so why was that a thing? And then Cody announces that Mary should move to the B and B, and she's like, "I thought we were we were trying to get back together." And of course, I would say, "No." I mean, since since this page, you haven't been trying to get back together. This page, I mean, which with an H E double hockey sticks, they no. are not going. Um, this is when, then they have the graduation party, which is the last of the family events before, I can't remember off the top of my head, you can watch our recaps and find out who knew at this point, but we know truly didn't know. I know that most of Christine's oh. kids didn't know, but truly didn't know. And then the next episode is, is Christine tells truly. And it doesn't because really tell she her because she overheard it. And so it's like, oh, that's so sad. And I, it really bothered me that season that they hadn't told Truly. And they were, like, even filming. But uh, Cody flat out said, I don't want her to know. And I don't, I, I don't want to rush this on her. I don't want to tell her. So I don't know. Maybe Christine would have put it off regardless. But Cody sure took credit for that. That he didn't want. And then when Christine did tell him, he's like, I think she did that on purpose to make me look bad. And it's like, dude. She's gone. Look at the mirror. I mean, that's what makes you look bad. Well, and I think this is a real example. I just said that for years and years and years, they made excuses for him. I think he really thought that Christine would, in the end, just say, like, I'm sorry, you know, I was wrong. I'm not going to break up the family. And then he could just do to her what he did to Mary and never forgive her, and she'd just hang around. Right. That is not what happened. Um, Cody is a mess. I don't know why I wrote that. But uh, I think it's very fitting and accurate. She gets all of the, the, fam the adults together and announces that her house is under contract and she's moving. Which they all kind of act surprised about. And I'm like, where were you guys the first half of the season? Like, she was pretty clear when she made her decision. And now they're acting like shocked. This is where we get the line, the wasted. A knife in the kidneys. kidneys um, all of the... Cue sacrifices the, I've made to love you. Cue the McKelty farty party. 
Yes, the McKelty Farty Party, where she's like, we have to get together to say goodbye. And my note goes, boo, boo, where she plays McKelty. both sides oh, and both parents. Yeah, she's like, let's go dump a toilet on his thing. And it goes over to his house and is like, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. She's like really sucking up and well she's well she's talking crap about both sides to the other, which is different than saying very different than saying, Hey, I'm not gonna get in the middle of this, I don't wanna take sides. That is actively taking both sides and causing more strife. So Chris this is when I consider Christine leaving. She packed up her stuff and left. But according to I guess the sister wives official thing, she hadn't actually left until she comes back for her snowblower. And Cody's just a real like you can't pack it this way, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, watches her leave. And I'm like, buddy, she's been saying she's unhappy. Literally since, like, season... I mean, re-watching is a trip. Because a lot of people thought she was whiny. But to me, it's like she's been fundamentally clear how long she's been unhappy. So to act like this is some big shock, she's been complaining since the very beginning. The very first episode, she's like, I think he's spending too much time away from the family. So there you go. Um, then... After she's gone, well, this is one of the things that I had forgotten, was the Corona Apocalypse where Cody and Robin nearly died. Yes, those are... Uh, I'm quoting him about how they nearly she died. She was so close to death they wouldn't admit her. They didn't admit her. I mean, and I'm not saying that they weren't miserable, but this whole pretense of like... Well, they've and been then, miserable since season one. Well, and then, this is the big thing, is somehow Cody plays this as though it was something that was done to him... Because he's like, I, we were nearly killed, and he's mad at Janelle. It's like, well, Janelle did not give it to you. In fact, Janelle did not get it. But what does the nanny do? Oh, she gives them COVID. Yeah. Um, and so the, the last episode of the season was Which Wife is Next, which, whoo, that is some heavy-handed title work. And that's when Janelle and Cody go out to eat, and they have that awful conversation. Where he, I mean, I, I, I think I've seen, like, we watch a lot of, the, like, the first 48 and shows like that true crime documentary. I've seen police interrogations with more warmth than what Cody had for Janelle, right? I mean... I've seen people talk yep. to people who shot someone with more warmth and caring than than Cody had for Janelle when he'd lean in and he'd be like, we haven't acted like a married couple in years. And I have someone who's fundamentally, fundamentally loyal to me. And then he cuts to a thing where he goes... I'm not saying she should be more like Robin. I'm just saying that Robin is amazing. And she should be more amazing like Robin. And it's like, you literally said that. Like, we could graph those statements with the transitive, you know, laws of where you're like, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. And we would have him saying you should be more like Robin. You can't put logic on Cody and Robin. I mean. Yeah. And then we have the tell-all where, where we, where we Janelle announced. Where we nothing. Well, she announced, Janelle announces she's separating. That she is separated. So there you go. That is it. That is 17 seasons of Sister Wives. If you listen to all this, I mean... Join us for the single life next week. <laughs> no. What? Oh. I thought you meant, like, seriously. And I'm like, I don't think there is a 90-day si single life. Okay, that's it, though. We are so excited for season 18. We are so excited to have a chance to talk with everyone. Are we, though? We will see you Monday morning or mid-morning or early afternoon, depending. Um, we do have a Patreon with some stuff, but, you know, it'll also be... We'd love for you to join the Patreon. I'm not trying to undermine it, but we, we will... Our normal recap that we do will be available in public on YouTube next Monday. See you then. Bye!